Hello world and welcome. Today we'll talk about a really interesting topic about Dueling DQNs. My name is Harris and let's get started. So if you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button or leave a like comment there and you will receive seven years of good luck, of course. So let's start with the very first um, picture here to just a recap what we are talking about the last time. So TQNs and basically deep Q networks here are um, on the very left side, you can see the agent, which um, is a deep Q network or a deep network here. Um, on the very right, you can see the environment where the agent is taking actions into the environment. He's observing the environment, what he's, what's going on, and then he's receiving back the states. If he's going to left or right or something like this. And as well, he's receiving a reward, which means if he's doing something good or he's turning to the right side, he's receiving a um, reward. So the target is here to receive the most max reward and that he's ending the game with the max reward, right? So to just recap what we are, we are talking about or what is the problem of TQNs or how you can improve the TQN to be more accurate, especially due to the estimators and the stability and everything. Double TQNs were proposed to just um, fix the bias and to fix the estimated problems, which you can see here. And uh, there are four uh, different games where you have on the value estimators and you have on the X axis, you have the training steps. And you can see at the red line here represents the normal DQN. And you can see the true value depending on the estimated value, this gap is really high. So the estimators in DQNs are overestimating. To make it a little bit better, um, double DQNs were proposed to make this more advanced and then to, yeah, to improve everything. How um, double Q network looks like? You can imagine this like on this on the next picture. So we don't have only one um, Q network. We have two Q networks. We have a, a normal Q network and a target Q network. On the left, you can see the environment in green, where um, the environment is storing all the actions, um, rewards, and everything in the states in the reply memory. And the Q network is basically interacting with the environment, right? So there's um, action and the state, and then he's copying everything, updates everything to the target network, where a Q value is passing by to the target Q network. And then the goal is to, uh, yeah, to um, decrease the DQN loss. That's how the double DQN was working with Q uh, with two Q networks. So the next step, why we are here, or why we're talking about today, even more improvement of this is um, the dual dueling uh, DQNs, which are in many cases even outperforming double DQNs. That's why we're talking about this topic today. So. Dueling DQNs from the architecture side looks a little bit different, which means they don't have two Q networks, they have two estimators at the very end. As you can see here, the uh, vanilla Q network, just the arbitrary Q network here on the um, top, and below you can see the dueling Q network. So the difference is that on the button you have the input picture from the environment with three Q um, convolution neural nets and or um, its input and two um, 
convolution neural nets. Then you have a flattening layer at um, almost end. And then the red um, vertical lines are estimators. So two in parallel estimators. The top estimators represents the value of the states and the bottom estimators um, is representing the advantage of the state depending on the actions. These are both of them are fully connected layer and then at the very end everything got summed up like an aggregation layer. And then you are calculating actually the Q value from the state action pair to yeah, receive the max um, Q value in this case. So today we are going to use um, not the cut pole from the open AI gym, we are using the Acrobot to just show the example of how you can um, deal with DQNs here. We have uh, three actions here and six states. And if you start the um, Acrobat here to just show how the performance looks like, you can do so and you can see that he's basically not reaching the horizontal line, which is like a threshold. So he's really bad. He has a score minus 500 and so on. So after some uh, episodes, you can see this is the second episode. He's still on the minus 500. So the goal is that the um, lower part of the acrobat should re um, go over this threshold that he's reaching this threshold, right? Of course, in best case, it's it should be stay um, in a vertical state as long as possible. But the goal is, of course, to reach this threshold, this black line that you saw. So to do so, to improve this acrobat, you're using Keras RL, and I set up here a um, model with um, almost 5,000 parameters, some uh, two dense layers, and then I'm building the agent where I'm using the um, Boltzmann policy, sequential memory, and so on and so on. And um, with the DQN agents comes the magic, right? So you can see I'm setting up gamma to 0 0.99 and I'm enabling dual link network. I'm setting it to true to enable the dual link network. And in this type, I'm using the dual link type average. You can use max and so on, but in this um, example, I'm doing the average. So this is basically how you are calculating the two estimators together. You are using the average of them or you are summing up everything. So this is basically what the agent is telling you. So afterwards, I'm compiling everything and fitting everything without within um, 100,000 steps. And you can see an improvement of the reward. So it's not minus 500, but it's around about minus 160. And if I'm visualizing now after the dueling um, DQN, how the performance looks like, then you can see actually improvement here. You can see that he's hitting and reaching the target and the threshold. Um, we are now at minus seven. With respect to the reward, you can see here now stopping at minus 94, but he was reaching the threshold. Of course, you can improve this network and, you know, to um, make it a little bit more performant and um, choose even more episodes and so on and so on, that you're really reaching this vertical um, state of the acrobat. But in this case, I just want to show that he was reaching the threshold. It's pretty fine you can see that um, he's doing a better job. So now you can, of course, save everything to reuse it in another example. And you can also see, I was, I'm was i plotting here the rewards or the episodes, and you can see that from um, around about minus 500 that he was improving to 
almost minus 60 after only 10 ep uh, episodes. You can see a really improvement here. So if you are, let's say, calculating now 100, 200 episodes, you will really see that he's reaching his goal. And yeah, but he was doing a really great job. I'm really happy with this. And so thanks a lot for watching and hopefully you liked it. Leave a like or comment there and see you soon.